to a terrific week of skating here in Munich. A first ever lady sweep. And now in a moment of skating history, three women all from the same country hear their national anthem. Three American ladies, three skaters bound together by a moment in history. There's the champion with her grace and athleticism. The achiever, the New England beauty, as consistent as she is elegant. One year ago, she achieved what had never been expected, a medal at the World Championships. Then there's the outsider. Success has been hard won and always on her terms. Three skaters linked in history. Since Munich, Olympic gold for the world champion. And when you're a champion, you're treated like one when you return home. You can dream about winning an Olympic medal, and if you do, who can blame you and your parents from feeling the joy? The parade? Bronze medalists earn them too. But what if you're the outsider, a former national champion who didn't win a medal at the games? What happens when you come home from the Olympics? Is there a parade waiting for you? No. Is there anyone? I don't know how you guys knew I was coming in. I didn't tell anybody. I can't believe this. Tanya Harding now has her chance to recapture the form that won her a national championship in 1991. This time, the world crown is at stake. Nancy Kerrigan can once again show the style that has brought her so far, so fast. Christy Yamaguchi, the champion. This has been her year, and now she has a chance to confirm her regal status as world champion. Three young Americans, three who have shared skating success, but only one can be today's world champion. Just five minutes south of the city of Oakland, the Oakland Coliseum, home of the NBA Golden State Warriors. Today, it hosts the 1992 World Figure Skating Championships, the ladies' champion to be decided. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Enberg, and welcome to our continuing coverage. One of six ladies will wear that gold medal within two hours. We're about a half hour away from the final six, and here's how they stand after the original programs, counting one-third of the total score. The Olympic champion, Yamaguchi, defends her world title. Chen Lu, she's only 15 from the People's Republic of China. She's trying to ruin the one, two, three sweep that the Americans enjoyed in Munich a year ago. Kerrigan third, Harding is fourth, Letitia Hubert, a teenager from France is fifth, and the French-Canadian José Suinard is sixth. Now let's call in uh, Sandra Bezik, who is a champion Canadian skater and choreographer, choreographed Christy Yamaguchi's program that we're going to see today that won her the gold. What are the qualities about this little 92-pound dynamo that uh, you admire most? Well, I think the world has come to know Christy as a shy and feminine skater who makes everything look so easy. The Christy I know is a hard-working athlete, and the thing I love about her most is her passion. Dick, she simply loves to skate. So when you get out on that patch of ice, if you love what you do, that can undo a lot of nerves, and I'm sure all six of those ladies have plenty of that going on right now, including Tanya Harding, who has the big triple axle. Can she vault from fourth to first? Well, everybody's talking about the triple axle, and I don't think the triple axle is going to win this event. If you look at the performances in Albertville, skaters were falling all over the place trying to do triple this and triple that. I think it's the, going to be the cleanest performance that will win this event. But uh, if Harding hits that triple axle and has a clean program, who knows? She could be a big story, and she will skate last of the six. How about Nancy Kerrigan? Well, Nancy had a difficult original program yesterday, and her nerves are showing. All right, Nancy Kerrigan, she was first to skate of the elite in yesterday's original program, and here's how we called it. 
22 year old Nancy Kerrigan, third in the recent Olympics. The Her legally blind mother, Nancy Brenda, Kerrigan. watching closely. As Kerrigan, remember the surprise in Munich a year ago? She rallied to beat Midori Ito and Surya Bono Lee and captured the bronze. must execute eight elements. And Nancy opens with the most critical of these elements, the jump combination. Hers is the triple lutz double toe loop. Oh no, what a start. That's going to be at least a point three deduction. If she has any hope of staying in contention, the rest of this program has to be clean. champion in any sport is being able to forget mistakes and errors and that's where Nancy Kerrigan is skating now wipe away the early error come back it isn't easy Kerrigan, the first of the major competitors to skate of the 40 in the competition. A mistake in the combination, but she showed her maturity, didn't let it affect the rest of her program. The 1992 World Figure Skating Championships are brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By fast-acting Sudafed. With Sudafed, you don't get drowsy, you get relief. By Nutrisystem, Nutrisize your life. And by AT&T, the right choice. All cars are made with sheets of metal. But one of these sheets is actually a sandwich of steel, resin, and steel used by Lexus to help quiet the cabin of the LS400. Care to guess which one? This person has taken a cold medicine with an antihistamine that warned him of driving and drowsiness. But this person took Sudafed, the leading cold medicine that won't cause drowsiness. Welcome back to the 1992 World Championships in Oakland. As close to a golden lock as there is in sports is the Olympic ladies champions chances in the ensuing worlds. 
not since 1956 has the Olympic winner not won the world title. Now that promises positive results for champion Christy Yamaguchi, who has joined an elite skating club with her Alberville win. Here's Tom Hammond. There is no other place where grace and beauty on ice can be displayed in a brighter spotlight than the Winter Olympic Games. Figure skating, a forum of tradition and class where there is opportunity to enter an elite world, a world where only four American women have been. 16 years ago, Dorothy Hamill captured the gold, a lasting and vivid image. There's nothing like standing up there and hearing the Star Spangled Banner being played. And it's just, it's the most thrilling moment in sport of all. <laughs> Only a month ago, Christy Yamaguchi had the chance to share that thrill so few others know. As she recaptured for the U.S., the gold medal Dorothy Hamill won in 1976. It's kind of neat to think that I'm following in her footsteps because she was always a big idol of mine when I first started skating. Now Christy returns home to Fremont, California as the new American Idol of Winter. She's greeted by adoring fans and heads into a whirlwind of opportunities. A gold medal, a new life. It was a little weird to be back in the States for the first time after the Olympics. Uh, seeing so many people that do recognize me now, it's kind of hard to believe. Across the country in Massachusetts, Christie's Olympic roommate, Nancy Kerrigan, brought her bronze medal home to proud friends and family. Stoneham even named a street after their new idol. Nancy also faces newborn stardom and celebrity. I'm in restaurants and people know who I am and ask for autographs and, you know, when I get up to leave, they, they're, the whole place drops their forks and knives and claps. I mean, that's really different. An Olympic medal now fills Nancy's life and her parents proudly shared her special moment. You need all this to be proud. You're proud anyway. Um, that's just extra. The next big moment in the lives of Nancy and Christy will come shortly after these world championships when each must decide whether to turn professional or retain amateur status in order to compete at the 1994 Olympics. There have been reports from the Yamaguchi camp that perhaps uh, the number of endorsement opportunities were not suitable. There hadn't been enough, maybe because of Christy's Japanese heritage, the Japan bashing that's been going on in the U.S. But Christy Ness, Yamaguchi's coach, told me that certainly wasn't the case. There had been plenty of opportunities. Things had just been quiet because Christy wanted to concentrate on performing at these world championships. Well, Christy certainly seemed focused yesterday as she skated her original program. Here's the way Dick and Sandra called it. Thank you. Representing the Olympic United champion, 20-year-old Christy Yamaguchi, introduced to this welcoming crowd. Cheers from this sellout audience at the Coliseum in Oakland. Her first appearance back on USI since winning the Olympic gold. There's her father, a dentist, a Dr. Jim, brother Brett, sister Lori. Mother Carol nervously does not sit with the rest of the family. Yamaguchi trying to repeat last year's world championship. Trains in Edmonton with Canadian champion Kurt Browning.
One more jump to go, the double axel. champion, Christy Yamaguchi, welcome home. And way up in the audience, there's her mother, Carol. She has to be happy with that performance. Although Carol was one of the few not screaming, it was like a warrior crowd, the way they saluted Yamaguchi, stretching before she comes on the ice with the other top six, the final group that will skate for medals and one of the six in fourth place wearing her trailblazers t-shirt Tanya Harding fourth at the Olympics fourth going into today's program we'll see her program next turn around what has been a tough year so far after finishing fourth at the Winter Olympics she returned to her old coach Diane Rawlinson Rawlinson took a look at the skates she would used in Alberville and decided that the blades had been mismounted and improperly sharpened so she decided new blades were in order while they were waiting for the new blades to arrive Tanya couldn't jump or spin so they had some free time and decided to completely revamp her two programs she's skating a new program today she hopes that and the triple axle can carry her to a medal and perhaps find herself in the process what kind of person I am, I really like. You have some ups and downs, and, and you can't be perfect all the time. I really did a lot of things that I regret. It doesn't bother me that people will try to make things up about me. You know, it doesn't bother me. To Tanya Harding, her tumultuous upbringing was a way of life, a tough way of life that manifested itself as a thorn in the side of the serene and staid world of figure skating. I want to be the type of person who people like. At the 1991 U.S. Nationals, they certainly liked Tanya skating. She stole the spotlight with her big triple axle that propelled her to a new way of life. With her husband, Jeff, Tanya was launched into uncharted territory, filled with new demands, exposing her private life, countless interviews, promotional appearances, and a television commercial. She was overwhelmed. I never expected everything to hit me like it did. I, I'd never won such a big, prestigious event, and, you know, I didn't know what to do. As rapidly as she had stormed to the top, Tanya crashed from her pedestal. Marital troubles, coaching changes, and a Sports Illustrated article exposing an abusive stepbrother all reflected on her skating as she barely made the Olympic team. Tanya went into seclusion, surprised the skating establishment when she left for Alberville only three days before competition. Coming in at, at the last minute was, was really smart with skating you know, here as much as I did. I trained harder than I've ever trained before. I do feel that it would have helped if we'd been there a few days earlier than when we got there. We were, I think, a few days too late. Harding never found her rhythm at the Olympics, and a long and frustrating season crashed to a bitter conclusion. Sixth after the original program, Tanya finally finished in fourth place, out of the medals and still out of sync. I knew that I wanted to do something different because what I have been doing wasn't working. Searching for answers, Tanya took charge, fired Coach Doty Teachman. Tanya's definitely not a real easy person sometimes to work with. I mean, she has her good points and she's got some, you know, there's the other side of the coin too. So um, I don't really feel that... Uh, it was frustrating, yeah, it was frustrating at times. You know, not any, maybe because she can be pretty stubborn, but that's part of what makes her Tanya. She has had some wonderful people in her life, people that she could really count on, people that really love her. Um, 
Maybe she gets afraid when she feels that kind of love. I, I, I don't really know. Her support corps frustrated and bewildered. Tanya rehired Diane Rawlinson, her childhood coach of 14 years, who defended Tanya's recent Portland altercation. She felt she needed to defend herself, that she wasn't going to let someone push her around. Tanya's trying very hard to grow up, and she's going to make mistakes. She's made a lot of mistakes this year, and she tends, she tries to refer to them as learning experiences, not mistakes. You can't be at your best all the time, and, you know, I don't have any excuses for what has gone on in the last year. I mean, everyone, you know, I've had different problems here and there, but everybody has problems, and I'm just trying to work over them and reach my goal. And here is the stubborn, tough, talented 21-year-old Tom Boy from Portland, Oregon, determined to rebound here in Oakland from that fourth place finish in Alberville. New choreography, new original program, new blades, new strategy. What a way to go into the world championships. A different side of Tanya skating to Moon River. So here she's doing the same combination as Christy Yamaguchi, triple lux, double toe loop. But no combination. <laughs> no nothing. That's going to be 0.5 or 0.6 deduction. Kerrigan, a big problem in the combination requirement, otherwise a good and very different program. And now we're live. Yesterday's original program's ancient history backstage before the big show. The final six will take the ice in the battle for best in the world in just minutes. We'll return to the Oakland Coliseum after this. Oakland Coliseum, a sellout crowd. Boy, this was a tough ticket. Nearly 14,000 here to see the ladies' championship. And just now, the final six skaters, the last group taking the ice. The American stars being cheered, Yamaguchi and Kerrigan and Harding, as they begin this uh, six-minute tuning and testing and checking out of the competition. Letitia Hubert, the French teenager, 
had her country aglow after a fifth place finish in her Alberville original program and Chen Lu of China. The 15 year old, she skating well enough that uh, it would not be a surprise for her to score the big upset and take home the gold. And of course also the Canadian cheer to cheer 22 year old Jose Swinar. 12 years ago, China shut out in their first competition here. Here's yesterday's program. This young lady is on her way to being a star. She's only 15. She skated a magnificent long program in Albertville, but she had problems with the short program. She opens with the triple lutz double toe loop. Very nice. She debuted at last year's Worlds at age 14, finished 12, was a solid sixth in the Olympics. Choreographer Tom Dixon is an American. This is a fabulous piece of work. One last jump, the double axle. What a program. She's done it, Dick. This is going to put her in a great place. Back live that performance earning Chen Lu the second position behind Christy Yamaguchi going into the free program which counts two-thirds and here is the order in which these young women will skate.